yeah, so we'll just, we'll, I guess, debate the, the efficacy of natural diets, uh, as far as longevity goes, I think is the best way to do it. Oh, well, I mean, you had given me a proposition and I figured that's what we were going to be debating. Um, so the proposition that you gave me was the natural human diet is best for ensuring optimal health. Yeah, I think optimal health as, as measured by longevity is probably, okay. um, yeah, what I'd like to defend. Okay. So let me just, uh, let me amend that, uh, best for assuring like, uh, optimal health just means longevity just for ensuring like what kind of longevity, like, like maximum longevity or something. Or yeah. maximum yeah, longevity. Okay. Yeah, I had a few questions about the proposition just because it just didn't look it didn't look clear to me. Um so my my first question is like what what is the natural human diet? Like what does that mean? Um <laughs> I, I would say it's it's what we've eaten for the majority of the evolution of of uh homo sapiens sapiens so like like I'd, i guess to put a date on it between three hundred fifty thousand years ago and twelve thousand years ago this isn't like offering me like any sort of description about what that diet is though like what constitutes oh, that diet meat predominantly so so wait so now the proposition is meat is best for ensuring maximum longevity well, I'm not necessarily saying I, I, I want. I more so want to debate, um, the, like the, the the aspect of of a natural diet, like what what that um maybe we get into antagonistic play, pleiotropy and things like that. Uh, well, I'm I'm interested in debating the proposition that you agreed to. Right. Um, Which... Yeah. So, like, first, I need to get clarity on what this proposition even means. So, like, now it's reading meat is best for ensuring maximum or maximum longevity, like. Well, how about this? How about an, an animal-based diet? So, um, eating predominantly meat. A diet of predominantly meat? Yeah. Is that like any permutation of a diet that's predominantly meat? So like, what if it was a diet of like predominantly meat, but it also had like poisonous cassava in it? Would that maximally, like, <laughs> would that produce maximum longevity? Like, I don't think so. So like, um, I think you just need to be like very specific. Like what, what kind of diet exactly are you talking about? Um, I'm not even going to say carnivore. I just, let me think about the best way to make this clear. Um, I, I don't even, I don't even see uh, much necessity in debating the diet itself. Like, that's not what I'm attempting to do. I just want to gain clarity on the proposition. Um, right, like, because the proposition as stated is not intelligible to me, right? Like, it says the natural human diet is best for ensuring optimal health. I don't know what the heck that means, right? I don't know what well, that well, means. Well, 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 we, we, we already clarified how I'm determining what optimal health optimal means, health, I guess. Yeah, so, yeah. Right, right. So, 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 so the confusion lies in what constitutes an opt it, uh, what constitutes a natural diet. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, my, my point is more so that, um, de like, debating, uh, or like, Talking about what constitutes a natural diet doesn't seem relevant when we could actually just talk about the differences between natural and novel diets w with regards to antagonistic pleiotropy. Now, I'm not here to like, debate that necessarily. I'm here to debate the proposition that you agreed to. Yeah, which is which is natural diet. I mean, that's basically the proposition. Well, the, it's, a, it's a natural diet. The proposition that you are agreeing to uh, ostensibly is that the natural human diet is best for ensuring uh, maximum longevity. And what I'm asking is what the natural diet even is. What is that thing? Like, what are you talking about when you say that? Okay, well, how about, how about we just say majority meat and then the rest would be either, uh, like fruits or vegetables. Okay. So, um, a diet of at least 50% meat where the rest is either meat, fruits, or vegetables. It is either meat, fruit, or vegetables. 
Okay, so a diet of 50% meat where the rest is either meat, fruit, or vegetables is best for ensuring maximum longevity. Um, well, can, can, can we actually compare that to something like, um, like best for, a diet of at least 50% meat with the rest being meat, fruit, or vegetables relative to, um, a, well, is that implied in the proposition that it's... Yeah, the referentiality is to, to all other diets is built into your proposition because you're saying okay. that it is the best, which means that regardless of the comparator, it will be on top. That's the way okay. I'm interpreting it. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so so it, when you say when you say best, like what do you mean by best exactly? Best for best. ensuring opt like best for ensuring maximum uh, longevity. Like, what do you mean by best right there? I mean that there can't be any other diet that's better, or there isn't any other diet that's better, or, like, what, what exactly are you meaning by best? Um, there's, the yeah, the, well, I think by best what I'm saying is that, and, and yeah, any diet that's less than 50% meat is not going to be as good as a diet with over 50% meat. Under under any circumstance, that that's that's under what I mean by best. Okay, under any circumstances. Actually, no, not not um, not not under any, not not under any circumstances. But there's th th there is no, mm, no yeah no, not not under any circumstances. But um oh, so okay so a diet with fifty five percent meat and the rest being an equal distribution of fruits and vegetables will always be better than a diet with forty five percent meat. With the rest being fruits or vegetables, I don't know how you want to make put that into a claim, but th that's what I mean by best. As in, a diet with less meat, given all other things being the same, is not going to be as good as a diet with more meat and all of the other things being the same. Up after that threshold of fifty percent. Uh. Uh, just one second. I'm just trying to get clear on this. Uh, that is under percent meat. So now the proposition is, and we can clear this up if there's any like grammatical weirdness, because I'm just trying to piece this together on the spot. Um, a diet of at least 50% meat, where the rest is either meat, fruit, or vegetables, will always be better than any diet that is under 50% meat with regards to ensuring maximum longevity. That's, um, would you sign off on that? Um, is that, is that what you want to get into? Like, what, what, like when you want to do this, I thought you wanted to talk about natural diets. I mean, that, that's what your email said. Um, oh, I mean, I, I, I just asked you for what proposition you'd be interested in debating and this is the proposition that you gave me and i'm just trying to gain clarity on this proposition i thought the proposition is what we were going to be debating i mean uh, a, pro a proposition is the object the truth value of a proposition is the object of a debate and this is the proposition that was on the table so i assumed that this is what we were going to be debating well in your in your emails me you said in your debate with brandon you claimed you claim to accept the proposition that eating the natural human diet is basically what's best to ensure optimal health. That's what you said. And you said, I'd be comfortable debating that proposition if you'd be comfortable defending it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so. I, I take that that's precisely what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're on the same page there. So now the proposition is a diet of at least 50% meat where the rest is either fruits or uh, meat, fruit, or vegetables will always be better than any diet that is under 50% meat with regard to ensuring maximum longevity. I guess, I guess my issue with this is that like in, in the actual debate, we're never going to dive into the intricacies of above or below 50%. Like that's not what we're, we're going to be getting into. That's, where, that's not where I was planning on taking it. So you're uh, yes, you consider yeah. yourself lucky. <laughs> well, well, which is why I don't, I don't like that being the proposition. So, well, I mean, it, these terms are not clear to me as stated in the original proposition, and this is just how you're unpacking it to me. So, I mean, like, if you don't even sign off on your own proposition, I don't know what the hell there is even to debate. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's not that I, that I wouldn't sign off on that. It's that 
I, I don't think it's a good representation for what's going to be discussed. I think it's unclear or for, for most people. And I'd rather make, cause like for something as debating a natural diet versus a novel diet, that that's, that's very simple. Um, um, so, yeah, so like I was interested in debating the proposition and I mean, like we could we could scrap this clarified proposition and just start fresh with a completely new one if you want to unpack the terms in a different way. Uh, I'm, I'm fine I, with that. Yeah, OK, yeah, so yeah. let's just scrap the whole thing. So like, what do you mean by optimal health? Um, well, optimal health, I would still say longevity. OK, uh, so, OK, and what do you, what do you mean by the natural human diet? Um, well, what can, can I ask what, what, what you would like to debate? Like, how, the what's proposition. It, what's it, what, well, what's, what, what, what's, what's a proposition that, um, can, can you outline something? Like, I'm, I'm curious to see what, what you would like to get into as far as, you know, sticking with the proposition. Well, I, it's not clear to me that the proposition is even intelligible. So it's not clear to me that there is even anything to debate. Right, right, but but you clearly had some ways that you would like to go about this. You clearly had some topics you want to to um, touch on. So I'm curious what you want to get into, like what you would like a prop the proposition to be. I mean, you you understand my viewpoint, like you you know you know my viewpoint very well. So I don't well, actually. I, I I think you do though. Like I, I think no, you understand. I mean, what, what, like what, I I have better access to my thoughts than you do. No offense. I don't know what the hell your views are because your views seem incredibly inconsistent to me. I don't know how to like pin down what your views are. I, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think when I say natural human diet, I, I think, I think of mo eating mostly meat as far as what, what else is in there besides the meat? Like, I, I don't really know. I don't really know what to say about that, but I don't think that's worth getting into because we wouldn't get into that anyway. No, I mean, it, 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 it's fine. I mean, once I have a proposition, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly where I would go with it, because here's the thing. Um, if you unpack the proposition into something that I find not particularly objectionable, then I'll just agree with it. And there's no reason to have a debate. If you can't unpack the proposition, then I'm convinced that you're just gibberating. And then there's no reason to have a debate then. But if you can unpack it into something that is propositional, that I still find objectionable, then we can have a debate. We're still at the point of like, it's not even clear a debate needs to happen because I don't know what the hell well, we're talking about. Well, okay. Well, you think that eating meat, right, will come at the expense of long-term longe of, of longevity. That, that, that's, that seems to be what you believe. So, and I believe that it doesn't. So how do we put this into words? Well, my, my, my views aren't in question right now. I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying, I mean, like, let's, let, let's think about this together instead of you just asking me what, what the claim should be, because you understand what, it's, what I, you understand what I believe. But it's I believe it's that your me, proposition. It's yours. It's yours to defend. I'm just, I'm just looking to get clarity on it because I don't understand it. I don't understand what a natural human diet is. When somebody says a natural human diet, I don't get a concept in my head of precisely what that means. And I certainly don't get a concept of precisely what somebody else means when they say that. So when you say a natural human diet, you need to unpack that in terms that I can find intelligible. Because right now, it's not intelligible to me. I don't know what the hell that means. Mm -hmm. What if we did it more like this? Like, what if we said to... Mm, beneath the threshold of maybe 80% of food coming from meat, the more meat we eat, the longer we'll live. Is that clear? Um, so, uh, is it like any diet consisting uh, of greater than 80% uh, meat? Uh, any diet consisting of greater than 80% meat no, I think uh, I I, th I think I was more going for before the the thresholds of eighty percent eating eighty percent of food coming from meat. More meat is better than less meat as far as ensuring longevity. So 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 basically, what 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 the the way you would interpret that claim is by um, saying eating seventy five percent meat is better than eating sixty five percent meat given that the remaining 35 and 45% or rather 25 and 35% are the same food. 
Yeah, I'm not appreciating how that's different than what I had typed, right? Like any diet consisting of greater than 80% meat is going is going to ensure maximum longevity, or would you say that there, there's like log linear increases in longevity after 80%? Or like no. Like I'm not I'm not I'm not clear on what you're getting at here. I'm saying more meat is better before like after 80%, I'm saying I, I like I'm not going to say that a carnivore diet is best for ensuring longevity. I, I'm simply saying that we should be eating most like the more meat before 80% of food coming from meat, the better. So like 80% is going to be better than 50%. 80% is better than 75%. It's, and I'm, but, I'm not saying it's linear. Oh, it's wait, not, are, you, are you saying that 90% will not necessarily be better than 80%? Like 80% yes, is some kind yes. of, oh, okay. So anything, yeah. Uh, any diet consisting of greater than, greater than 80% meat. Okay. So like, um, um, so then the proposition would be like, um, something along the lines of any diet consisting of less then 80% meat um, will not be best uh, for ensuring yes. maximum longevity. Like, yeah. is that kind of what you're getting at? Okay, yeah. so like all, all permutations of diets that are above 80% meat do not produce differential longevity effects, but, all, but, any, but the lower you go in in meat like the the less longevity you have yeah I, i'd be fine debating that but i what i don't want to get into and i don't think you were planning on this but getting into the intricacies of the percentages like i no, think no, i think I don't, I, yeah yeah i literally don't care about that stuff um okay. so yeah it's not somewhere i was planning to go planning to go but uh yeah now i'm back to my original question um about uh the word best i, I still don't know what the word best means right we're rebuilding the the proposition like what does the word best mean um as in there's, there's nothing yeah, yeah go keep going no go on well the, there's the, there's nothing that would reach the goal of longevity better than uh th th than that like it's well actually let me think about that so best in this context um mm. Yeah, best. Well, best. Is, I'm not sure what was really confusing. Oh, because like best could be interpreted in a bunch of modal ways, and I want to know which modal um, use of the term best, <clears throat> if it's even a, a modal use of the term best. It could be unpacked in a lot of ways. It can be unpacked in like um, kind of like a modal way where you're saying you're where you're making some kind of possibility claim. It could be unpacked in like a referential way where where it's like, oh, it just means that this is better than that. Like you could unpack it all sorts of different ways. I'm just looking to kind of grasp it and figure out like which which way you mean. So right now the proposition is nothing reaches the goal of uh, maximum longevity better than a diet consisting of um uh oh wait. No, that won't work. Uh uh so nothing reaches the goal of longevity better than any diet uh, consisting of uh, greater greater than 80% meat. That would be like the proposition. Nothing reaches the goal of longevity better than any diet consisting of greater than 80% meat. I think that's actually pretty close to what you said. Um, well, I think it was better. I think it was more so... Anything less than eighty percent meat will not be best in living in uh, achieving optimal longevity. Oh, okay. So, uh, oh, I see. I see. So maybe I need to reword this. Okay. So anything, any any diet consisting of less than eighty percent meat will not uh, be best for ensuring op, uh, maximum longevity with best meaning sorry what did you say again nothing well as, as, like in terms of defining best or just mm -hmm. the, the claim just just best like what do you mean by best there mm. any diet like it'll, yeah 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 can you, can you read the claim Oh, yeah, it was like uh, any diet consisting of less than 80% meat um, would be or would not be best for ensuring maximum longevity. Um, like like as in, as in it won't do the job better than a 
than a diet consisting of 80% meat. Any diet consisting of less than 80% meat um, will be... But, 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 but the problem is, like, what, what, what has to be considered is that I'm not saying a diet of 80% meat and then 20% poisonous plants is going to be better than 75% meat and 25% fruit. I, I, well, what, what needs to be considered in the, in the proposition, I think, is that the remaining parts, that is, is that the, the, the remaining portions are the same. So given that the, the the remainder is the same. So like whatever constitutes that last 20% needs to be held equal? Yeah, and, and it needs to be held equal to, like, if you were to eat less meat, the, what, what, what would... Um, what would consist of the remaining percentage is going to be the same thing. And what, what would, okay, what would that thing be in order for in order for this relation to hold with the maximum it, longevity? Would it, it have to be like fruit and vegetables? No, no, it, it would be. Any, so, so here's my point. Let me try to be clear. So, my, so eating eighty percent meat and then twenty percent of one other thing. It could be anything. It could be fruit. Is going to be better than eating fifty percent meat and 50% fruit. But what I'm saying is you can't go ahead and say that my claim eating 80% meat and 20% of some, of some other thing like fruit is going to be better than eating 50% meat and 50% of some other like toxic thing. Like I'm saying that we need to equalize the the, the uh, remaining food. Like they have to be the same thing for, for my claim too. Um, like in my claim. Um, yeah, I mean, like, some of that seems like, um, so I asked you, I asked you earlier, like, in any diet above 80% meat will just be, like, non-inferior, like, they're all kind of, like, non-inferior, regardless of right, the proportion right, of meat, right. but, but the, what you're saying is, like, something has to occupy that space, and it can't be, like, poisonous plants or whatever? Uh, I'm saying whatever occupies that space has to be the same thing when you're basically uh, looking at other proportions of meat oh like, so like all, like all things equal like more meat like um all like yes. all, all things e okay i got it um yeah, yeah. um all else equal any diet consisting of less than 80 percent meat will be like all things equal any diet consisting of less than 80 percent meat will be uh will, 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 will not will, will not be as good as a diet consisting of 80 percent meat uh will not be as good um or will not i think i'm going to be charitable here will not ensure maximum longevity yeah, uh, yeah. ensure maximum longevity uh, all else equal any diet consisting of less than 80 percent meat will not ensure maximum longevity uh to a greater degree uh than a diet of greater than 80 percent meat right like that's that's the proposition all else equal any diet consisting of less than 80 percent meat will not ensure maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet of greater than 80 percent meat okay well, well, well can, can we even make this even clearer like more obvious mm -hmm. for people can we say a diet consisting of because because I, I assume you would believe that eating we can even say like twenty percent and then like eighty percent like a, a diet consisting of less than twenty percent meat will not be because I I, th I think that makes um that makes it a much more like palatable thing for an audience like that it's it's more understandable less than twenty percent will not be as good as greater than eighty percent there's there's a clear difference in our opinions well, and and there's less slight nuance th this is getting pretty close to something that's clear to me I just uh there there's just one last thing that i need clarification on because i actually i i don't mind the 80 percent threshold like anything lower than that will you know i i, I get i get this concept um and y you know whether or not the audience gets it to a greater degree i don't, I don't really care like me and you are the people talking i'm sad i'm satisfied with this for the most part there's one there's one, one last word that i'm not quite sure exactly how you're using so the the word ensure i take to mean like um um like grant some kind of certainty right um so when something is insured i i take that to mean that like something is like certain or something how about, how about cause 
Well, uh, all, well, let's see how that would sound. I mean, like, all else equal, a diet consisting of less than 80% meat will not cause maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet. Or yield? Yield? Uh, yeah, yeah, yield. Uh, yeah, so it's like produce. Um, yeah. So, right. Produce is fine, yeah. Right, so this is, this, this, this is intelligible to me, I think. Um, all else equal, any diet consisting of less than 80% meat will not yield uh, maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet of greater than 50% meat. Yeah, that's intelligible you mean, you mean, to me. You mean 80? Uh, greater than 80% meat. Did I say something else? Yeah, you said 50. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That was, that was uh, my mistake. But, um, but, but do you, like, would you defend the proposition if the initial number was 20? Like, is that still a proposition you'd, you'd want to defend? Well, I'm not defending this proposition. I, I would be, I would be con- right, right, calling I this mean, into question. Right, right, right. When you, when you call into question the proposition, if the initial number was 30 or 20? No, no, I don't think it would change my approach at all. I don't care okay, about so the, I don't, yeah, I don't care about the numbers. It, do, do, do you think you can change the, the first number to 20 then? Okay, so all else equal, any diet consisting of less than 20% meat will not yield maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet... Uh, of greater than 80% meat. Is that, like, is that what you're trying to get at? Yeah. yeah okay, okay, I mean, that's still intelligible to me. Um, okay. So, there's one thing here that I can see very clearly that is, like, all of, all of this is fine now. Um, there's one point here that is very obvious to me uh, as a point of attack, and that is just, what do you mean by not, right? Because when you say that it will not yield maximum longevity, like, what does that mean? Like, is that some kind of possibility claim? Um, well, um, well, not. It's just if we put all other factors to the side, then the person on more meat will do better than the person on less than twenty yeah, like, percent. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, are you saying that like it's? Are you saying that like it's impossible for somebody if, on if, a on a diet of less than twenty percent meat having better longevity or um? Or, or, yeah, having better longevity than somebody on a diet of 80% meat? Are you saying that's an impossibility? All else equal, assuming, you know, all, all, all else equal, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, all, like all everything else, yeah. Okay, so not, um, so not is taken to be like some kind of modal claim with regards to possibility, right? Like, so, so here now, the, like, the proposition has some, like, um, it has some stuff baked into it about an impossibility. There's an impossibility claim in here. So by what modality are you making the impossibility claim? Is it a logical impossibility or is it a physical impossibility? What kind of what kind of impossibility is this? Well, m- m- maybe this, maybe I can make it clear with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the only way I would say it's the only way I would make this say it's impossible. is if you have two identical twins, everything else everything else the same except one eats less than 20 percent and one eats over 80 percent the one over 80 percent will live longer that I'm, I'm not saying impossible in every single you know all these other contexts where you're not controlling for different lifestyle confounders i'm saying only in a situation like like the one i described okay so uh, yeah i'm gonna have to replace the word not with like an entire paragraph in that case um yeah, so you're not saying that like all else equal, simpliciter, any diet consisting of less than 20% meat, um, or like all things equal, it is impossible for any diet consisting of less than 20% meat to produce longevity gains over a diet um, where over 80% um, is meat. All, all, all else equal, yeah, that's fine. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. So, so you're, you are saying that that's impossible or you're not? Yeah, yeah, it's impossible if, if everything else is equal. Right, okay, so, like, again, my, uh, the same question's on the table. Like, are you saying that's a logical impossibility or a physical impossibility? I, I don't really understand the difference. Oh, like, a logical impossibility would be, like, if um, if it broke a law of logic, right? So, like, there are three laws of logic, and if it, if it, uh, if it violated one of them, that would be, like, a logical impossibility. Um, yeah. And if it was a physical impossibility, it would mean that like there's some like physical constant or physical law that would be violated if this happened. If there was an instantiation of a diet of less than 20% meat, all else equal, that produced 
better longevity over a diet of 80 percent meat like one of those two things on if the if the if the if the, um, if the impossibility claim is going to go through like one of those two things has to be demonstrated okay um so there's a logical contradiction has to be demonstrated or some kind of physical law has to be broken it's probably, more, it's probably logical all right so like what's the contradiction that would be entailed um well, it, it, it would be, well, I mean, for example, me being associated with longevity or like, I mean, I, I don't really know how, I don't really know why this needs to be embedded into the proposition. Well, it's your proposition. I mean, we could remove the impossibility claim if you want. If you want to retract it, that's perfectly fine with me. Well, if I, if I retract the impossibility claim, then there is no proposition. Well, for the time being, we could replace it with something else, like a probability claim. I would sure. so uh, so not likely to yield. <laughs> so all else equal, any diet consisting of less than twenty percent meat will will not be uh, will not be likely to yield maximum longevity over uh, to a greater degree than a diet of greater than 80 percent meat so that's uh, that, i like that yeah oh okay okay yeah so um now that we got that out of the way this this seems perfectly reasonable and intelligible to me i mean it doesn't seem reasonable to me but like it, i don't know why i would accept it but it seems intelligible to me yeah so i guess like uh my first question is uh is this uh so this this is um so this is a this is a proposition that's actually like um it's an empirically testable proposition which puts it directly into the domain of being a scientific hypothesis would you sign off on this being a scientific hypothesis yeah that, that, right. that's fine yeah. Yeah, I would agree that this, this takes the form of a scientific hypothesis because it's an empirically testable proposition that um, is used to explain things and like systematize and like unify knowledge and observations about phenomena and stuff like that. That's what I take it to kind of mean. Um, right. So my first question here is like, um, yeah, what's the evidence for that? Oh, wait, are, are you are you already recording on your end? Oh, yeah. OK, I haven't been recording on mine. Let me just start. Um, give me a sec. Do you mind just like, we'll just like repeat the claim and then start? Sure. All right. Recording in progress. All right. So do you mind just, uh, repeating the claim? Yeah. So the proposition that was clarified was all else equal, any diet consisting of less than 20% meat will not be likely to yield maximum longevity to a greater degree than any or than a diet of greater than 80% meat. Um, and I asked if this was a scientific hypothesis because it takes the form of an empirically testable proposition that is used to explain things and systematize and unify uh, knowledge uh, about phenomena. And you, you agreed that this is a scientific hypothesis. So given that it's a scientific hypothesis, I then asked, what's the evidence? Mm. Yeah, well, me... Uh, there was a recent 2020 study showing meat is associated with longevity. Right. Okay. So, but, but I mean, like, meat's associated with longevity. I mean, like, that's that's not really going to get you to the proposition. I mean, like, w did they actually have, like, a, a comparison between under 20% meat to over 80% meat? No, but meat was i mean I, th I thought i thought you didn't want to get into the it, the actual intricacies of the numbers i mean if 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 meat is associated with longevity and there's actual really quality evidence that meat eaters are more prone to the unhealthy user bias then why wouldn't you expect that eating more meat yields longevity right so are you referring to that cross-sectional study that had like a hundred and something countries in it yeah yeah, so like that's just like an ecological association. So like I have an alternative hypothesis. Um, meat is a correlate for affluence, and people have more aff more longevity in affluent countries. So what's the argument that you that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than my hypothesis? Mm, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. I just, I mean, I, I look at the the unhealthy user bias, and and as I said. There's complete proof that meat eating is associated with doing other 
lifestyle factors that are uh, proven to be detrimental to longevity. And therefore, I think if we're seeing that meat is associated with longevity, despite those uh, negatives associated negatives that meat eaters are more likely to partake in, then it seems pretty clear to me that eating meat is a good way to ensure longevity. Yeah, but I'm not sure how that makes your I'm I'm not sure how that makes this evidence more expected on your hypothesis than mine because affluence is going to probably supersede all, most of those other um, health considerations in terms of its explanatory power with regards to longevity. So you might even just expect this on my hypothesis more. So like, what's I, the argument that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than mine? What's the argument that where's the, the evidence that affluence is more? Uh, is playing a larger role in, in longevity than the various like unhealthy user biases that eating meat is basically uh you know uh, that, that 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 goes with eating meat it's not my burden it's your burden you're the one making the claim you need to demonstrate that it's more expected on your hypothesis than some alternative hypothesis it's not my burden okay well i mean i i can go with this in other ways if 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 you don't like the correlation, it's just you've, I mean, I, I've heard you many times talk about uh, correlations. And uh, when we talked previously, you said, well, how do you establish that uh, smoking cigarettes is not, um, you know, is not just uh, like you, whatever, do, whatever you said about that. And be, to, to, as, as, a, as an attempt to glorify epidemiology or, or, or um, substantiate the findings. And now I'm giving you an example of epidemiology, and it seems like there's kind of an inconsistency in your appreciation of epidemiology based on your based on what your agenda is. No, no, I would disagree. Um, but can we actually like can I get a concession then that this isn't it's not clear that this is actually evidence in favor of your hypothesis? I think it's I think it's evidence that could work with other pieces. It, it alone can't justify the hypothesis, but it can work with other uh you know pieces of evidence just by the hypothesis right so like at, like what do you take evidence to mean can you give me a quick definition of like what evidence means to you yeah evidence is something that, that substantiates the claim but i don't i don't think evidence i don't think one piece of evidence i think evidence can work with other pieces of evidence to substantiate the claim one piece of evidence in itself doesn't need to fully substantiate a claim uh, well, yeah, I, I'm, I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't take the view that evidence needs to fully substantiate a claim. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I take a different view about what evidence is. I, I, I take evidence to be something that which is expected on a given hypothesis or more expected on a given hypothesis compared to some other hypothesis. If it's not more expected on that hypothesis compared to some other hypothesis, then it's just not evidence. Like, it's something else. Like, it's just... It, <laughs> it's not evidence, right? So... If you're going to say like, oh, there's this study that showed like this correlation between like meat eating and and whatever, it's like, OK, that's one hypothesis, right? This is your this is your hypothesis that's actually in contention right here. But if I was to just give a, an alternative hypothesis and say like, hey, since it's cross sectional study, there's 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 no prospective um, follow up. There's no like there's, 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 there's no temporal component. There's nothing like that. You're just looking at a raw association between different variables. It's not clear to me that you're not just looking at a correlate for affluence because you can actually see the exact same correlations with smoking and longevity across all of those same countries, too. And I can actually send you that data. So it's not clear to me that you're not just looking at an affluence effect. If anything, you might actually expect that on my hypothesis more than your hypothesis. Right. So what's the argument that it's expected on your hypothesis more than it's expected on my hypothesis? Wait, are, are you saying that um, smoking is correlated with longevity? Yep. Precisely. Really? <laughs> because it's a correlate um, because it's a correlate for affluence people who people who can afford to smoke live longer on average in those countries um people or countries that uh, i should phrase that differently countries where the population is affluent enough to afford cigarettes are more likely to have a higher average life expectancy just as in countries where people are are um wealthy enough to afford eating higher amounts of meat they also have higher longevity because meat is like expensive relative to other foods. So it's it's not clear to me that it isn't just a correlate for affluence, just like smoking is a correlate for affluence. They both in like a correlate they both correlate with longevity. So again, like what's the argument that your evidence is more okay. expected on your hypothesis than my hypothesis? 
that's fine. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I think, I think it's reasonable if, if, um, if smoking is correlated with longevity, then, then there's no reason why this evidence would stand. So that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So I can get a concession that this isn't evidence. Sure. That's fine. Yeah, okay. th- that's fine. Um, right, but, so but I, uh, to back to yeah, the so proposition, I'll... back to the proposition, yeah. what's the evidence for it? Um, that eating a natural diet is what's best. Like eat, like eating what humans are, have been basically eating for millions of years is, is what's best for longevity. Um, well, that's not evidence. That's just an assertion. Like what is the evidence? Um, yeah. So the evidence would be by simply uh, looking in, in nature. I know you don't like this argument, but I'm, I'm going to bring up a couple points. So animals tend to live about seven times as long as the age at which they're fully grown. Um, this is a trend that we commonly see. And if that was to be applied to humans, um, we would be living well into our 130s or 140s. And it also seems as if um, uh, it seems like when animals are not given their natural diet, when they're given a novel diet, they tend to be sicker. And for you to assert that humans eating a novel diet would somehow benefit, you would have to be implying that we're some sort of anomaly uh, with regards to how the whole animal kingdom operates. And I don't think that's a claim that can be can be made or at least justified. So I just want to get clear on what exactly the evidence is here. Can you just like succinctly just give me like the evidence for the claim? What I mean, I I just gave an explanation. So <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'm just looking for like a like just like something a little bit more abridged that I can just like kind of like handle and actually like look at. Um, so the evidence the evidence for the proposition is that um there i think you said something like there is a tendency um for natural diets to fill in the blank sorry there's a tendency for natural diets to yield longevity relative to more novel diets in in the animal kingdom and in and in humans but um I, I was more talking about the animal kingdom uh yeah the i mean <laughs> the the animal kingdom yeah, it's not gonna. It's that's that's it's it's actually it's not gonna be clear if that evidence is more expected or on on your hypothesis relative to some other. Um, yeah, I mean, like if you if you have like a natural diet um, <clears throat> that that an organism evolved on, um, you'll probably see some advantages over um, novel diets within certain time frames. So that's certain. That's 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 not something I wouldn't contest. That's not something I would contest, but. To say like um, so, it, like I'm still not clear on like what exactly the evidence is here. So there is a tendency for natural diets to yield longevity uh, 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 relative to novel diets. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, so and, and, and would you just use antagonistic pleiotropy as as a way to just get that out of the way? Well, see, the thing is that, like, there are many, there, there's an infinite number of permutations of novel diets, and just because a handful of them um, didn't produce longevity benefits over natural diets with some groups of animals, it, it's not clear if that's more or less expected on the hypothesis, actually, because it could just be that the particular novel diets that were selected were just not particularly good. It doesn't preclude well, could- the fact that there could be novel diets that are better than natural diets. What, what what would a good novel diet like in, in 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 your opinion what would a good novel diet be that supersedes the efficacy of uh at least 80 percent meat diet um i'm not sure i understand the question well i i i'd like to know the the because if you said that if you say that this diet that a, a, a good novel diet exists then there has to be then i'd like to know the constituents Right, like I, 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 the thing is that it's it's not my burden to substantiate. So, like, uh, there is a tendency for natural diets to yield longevity relative to novel diets. Um, like, the thing is that there's just an infinite number of permutations of novel diets. Just because a few of them, like, um, or, or even just one or two of them, haven't worked out for some animals, I don't see how that's actually more or less expected on your hypothesis. Uh, what I'm simply saying is that the best novel diet. Um, will never be better than the, the natural diet and 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 it, like uh, what here's just, just for the sake of clarity I, I would like to know what novel foods you think are better than um ancestral foods and what and why that would be the case 
I don't know why you're asking me any questions about my beliefs. They're not on. They're not in contention right here. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm debating the proposition in question. So the proposition well, in question is all else equal, any diet consisting of less than twenty percent meat will not be likely to yield maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet of greater than eighty percent meat. And your evidence for that is there is a tendency for natural diets to yield longevity uh, relative to novel diets. Yeah. I don't. I don't see how that would be more expected on that hypothesis. Well, I guess I guess um, th there's never been a diet in with any animal in which giving them a novel a novel food is allowing them to live longer than when they're eating their natural food. I I've never seen that. I mean, if you have, then um, I guess I get and then, then my claim is totally defeated. But but I, I never I, I don't think that exists. In fact, th there's no way that exists. So. Um, well, that seems like another impossibility claim, and you don't want to go down that rabbit hole. You like, I think you realize what happened the last time you tried that. I don't think you want to do that again. Um, but here's the thing: when you're looking at wild animals, it's not clear whether or not you're just seeing some survivorship bias effect. At the very least, it's not clear whether or not you're just seeing some survivorship bias effect, right? Because most wild animals die when they're young before they can even reproduce. This is true of humans too. Like over 50% of humans like die or like around 50% of, of, of humans like, like die every generation in the wild, right? So infant and child mortality rates are up around 50% in like traditional ancestral um, historical populations and whatnot. And this is actually just a very recent phenomenon that we were able to drive that down through things like vaccination and whatnot. Now we have like under 1% um, or even under like a fraction of 1% uh, infant and child mortality in like Western developed countries. So um, the thing is that when, when you have 50% of your population dying every generation, it's not clear that it, like what you're seeing is isn't just actually a, a survivorship bias effect of the fact that the stronger half of the population is surviving in every generation. So if you have animals in captivity, presumably they also have access to like medical care and stuff when they're reproducing and stuff. And you have um, members of that population being introduced that aren't really they they're not they're not going to like the survivorship bias effect just isn't going to apply to them. So maybe they just get more sickly because they are the individuals who would have otherwise died in the natural context. So it's difficult for you to actually disambiguate the survivorship bias effect from the diet effect. And I'm not sure where the diet effect is coming from if the, if the survivorship bias effect is an alternative hypothesis that also makes the same prediction, right? So I my 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 hypothesis is that there there's a survivorship bias effect going on and it's not clear what the effect of diet is. So what uh so again like what's what's the evidence that you're that or what's the argument that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than my hypothesis? Well, I mean, again, I, I, I think it's way more logical. Like, I think it makes way more sense to err on the side of caution and eat the natural diet that animals seem to do best on when they do their natural diet. Like, it, like it, it just seems radical to me to, 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 to suggest that deviating from a natural diet in the hopes of achieving longevity is a, a smart way to go about it. Just just based on what we've seen in, in the animal kingdom, even what we've seen in humans, but... Uh, yeah, that's just an appeal from incredulity. That's not an argument that you want to use to support this. <laughs> like, it seems weird to me. So, like, that, that. yeah, that's literally a logical fallacy called an appeal from incredulity. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to find that particularly persuasive, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost prepared to pretend I didn't hear it. So, like, what's the argument that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than mine? I have a hypothesis that survivorship bias explains the effects. What's the argument that this evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than mine? I mean, I, I don't really have any quantitative evidence to to say that the the, the survivorship bias is more is uh, less at play than than what I'm what I'm discussing. I just think it. Okay, great. That sounds like you're conceding well, that this also isn't evidence. I I, I'm, I don't think it's a concession. I think I think. Well, he, he, here's the other thing. Well, I feel like these pieces of evidence can all work basically in any. We can work with one another to substantiate a claim. Oh like, sure, I mean, like, yeah, that that that's just trivially true. I don't I don't contest that. The thing is that I've been able to weave together alternative hypotheses that you can't defeat. That's the problem. So even if you weave them all together and have like this this 
like I can still just weave all mine together and it's still just it's still just going to be the same defeater. Like you, you just need to provide arguments for these pieces of evidence. Um, so like <laughs> in in like individually, the evidence that you put on the table, it's not clear how it's more expected on your hypothesis than my hypothesis. If you aggregate them somehow, I mean, it, it, it's not clear what that's doing for you. I'm not entirely sure even what that means, but um, yeah. So can we agree well, that like if you can't figure out how to tell me what, why this is more expected on your hypothesis than mine, that this wouldn't count as evidence? Well, I, I kind of want to know what the alternative is like to to to. Um eating uh meat like like what 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 are you supposed to do instead if you want to achieve longevity based on your proposition this sounds like something that you should have already worked out ahead of time i should be asking no, you that question no, i i i, I want to know what you think though why does it matter what i think because i i just want to know well no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna allow you to derail the conversation it's your proposition on the table i'm interrogating i'm cross-examining your proposition right so, like, you've given me two pieces of evidence, turned out they weren't evidence. So what's the evidence for the claim? Well, okay, well, ha how about we look at, um, how about we look at the, the Harvard study, the Harvard carnivore study, where everyone, basically, everyone who went on it got incredibly good results. They Most weren't incredibly good results. I saw those results. A lot of people don't know how to interpret that table. I think it's table four in the paper. They include outside the brackets the actual like um, the act the unpaired data, and they include in the brackets paired data, and it looks like mean and standard deviation the way it's normally represented in tables, but that's not actually the way it's represented. And if you look at the paired data, they actually did worse. They did worse. Yeah, they did. They did worse on a number of metrics, particularly coronary artery calcification. It was a non-significant increase in coronary artery calcification. With paired data, that's that means people who had either with or without CAC at baseline had an increase in CAC with their follow-up examination after the carnivore diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like well, I, it, it's not clear how that evidence is more expected on your hypothesis <laughs> because how about, how about this? Every other food besides meat seems to confer a detriment. Oh, that's just going to be trivially false. Um, because they, like you, you have like basically the entire field of nutritional epidemiology showing evidence that's not expected on your hypothesis. Well, okay, so so how how do you know that it's not um, like affluence or it's not healthy user biases? Like if, if you're going to dismiss epidemiology when I'm making my claim about meat being associated with longevity, how are you going to say that your epidemiology is more valid than than what I cited? Uh, because it has higher internal validity. You're referring to cross-sectional studies. I'm referring to prospective cohort studies when I talk about epidemiology. You're talking, you're talking about, you said prospective co cohort studies? Yeah. Yeah. And compared to cross-sectional studies, they have enormously higher internal validity. That's the symmetry breaker. I mean, I would reject cross-sectional studies even if they were in my favor. I don't think they're particularly good evidence. Mm. Right. So like we have an entire field where we're producing prospective cohort studies that are investigating populations consuming more meat as opposed to less meat. And they're producing results that aren't expected on your hypothesis. Right. So it just I mean, what explains that? Well, wouldn't wouldn't I mean, the health user bias still would be at play, as would the. Can you define thing. just 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 humor me here because a lot of people use this term and don't actually understand what it means. Can you re can you recreate for me what the healthy user bias means? The the people who engage in one activity that might not be so healthy also do other things that have been proven to be healthy. So for example, eating plants, people who eat lots of vegetables are more likely to get more sunlight and um like probably higher socioeconomic status they're probably drinking better water like they're probably i don't know like, like there's a whole host of things i can tell you i can tell you right now that's not the healthy user bias that's not so, what that so, means the healthy so, user so. bias is the healthy user bias is a type of selection bias whereby a certain demographic of people are more likely to participate in research as opposed to another demographic of people that's what the healthy user bias is what you are actually d describing right there is something called multicollinearity now, multicollinearity, oddly enough, 
there isn't really strong evidence for multicollinearity in the in the the research papers that I'm talking about because what happens when you include um, when you include variables that uh, co-vary in the same model generally the confidence intervals blow up and it's more likely non-significant right so when you see tight confidence intervals and statistical significance that's evidence against multicollinearity right so when you are describing like all oh, of these things correlating together that's multicollinearity when we look at the actual papers we don't see we don't see evidence of multicollinearity we see evidence of independence which means that this interpretation of the healthy user bias that you're putting on the table is not actually like correct there's like no evidence for it um so yeah I, I would just say that like that that's just it's not substantiated by the evidence i i don't really understand your explanation of why of why if what i described is multicollinearity i don't understand why multicollinearity wouldn't be applicable in the studies yeah, that i just because in the adjustment model of those studies like let's say we're in well, let's say we're investigating red meat right and we have red meat and cardiovascular disease and in the model we pay we place things like uh age sex bmi um fruits and vegetables um socioeconomic status education uh marital status yada 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 if any of those things were correlating together so tightly um that it was ambiguous which one you were looking at what you what would happen when you actually included that in the model is that the confidence intervals would blow up they would go from being tight to being barn doors but that's not what we see in those papers so clearly there's enough variation in the populations that we're that we're investigating that we get relatively precise results we don't get barn doors with the confidence intervals we get tight results there's, that's evidence of independence not evidence of multicollinearity so what you're describing literally is not verifiable in the actual studies that you're critiquing with this critique like your critique literally just doesn't apply mm. yeah i mean like the, the problem is I'm, I'm not like i'm not familiar with a lot of your arguments and a lot of the evidence that you're citing so it's hard for me to like discern between between truth and, and fallacies i, I actually oh, don't know like, oh, it, like, like, the, like, let me let, let me clarify something for you this isn't my opinion this isn't something that you're gonna that is this is a mathematical consequence of doing the of doing a model with the variables behaving the way you're saying they behave right like you can actually measure this mathematically with something called the variance inflation factor right like if you have multiple variables going into the same model that are basically proxying for one another the variance inflation factor is going to go through the roof and the confidence intervals are going to blow up. It's just a mathematical consequence of having variables that are behaving the way you say they're behaving in the model. Right. So if your hypothesis is that those that, that these variables are are actually proxying for each other in the way that you're suggesting they do. The evidence like the tight confidence intervals and the statistical significance um, in the aggregate data is literally not expected on that hypothesis. Um, and it, and like mathematically we wouldn't like i don't even know how you would get that mathematically um given what you've described so yeah i mean like it's just a false claim at the end of the day mm. yeah i mean like mm, the problem is a lot like i really don't know a lot of what you're saying and like the the the, the ways that you're, you're like the words that you're using to um like produce metrics that would be able to figure out whether this whether the evidence of setting is right or wrong like i'm not familiar with these things so um yeah well i mean not... like th these are the types of concepts that are going to be invoked when we're comparing scientific data if you're going to invoke science i mean you told me this was a scientific hypothesis right if you're going to invoke science these are the types of baseline things that you need to be familiar with in order to even talk about the subject right so just if you're admitting to me now that these are not concepts that you're familiar with, basically you're admitting to me that you're not familiar with science. And if you're not familiar with science, I would say that you'd be a little less confident in your claims regarding scientific evidence going into the future. Mm -hmm. I think I think I I, I embrace logic. Um, what did you say? Sorry, you broke up for a second there. No, I think I I think I embrace logic. You embrace logic. I mean, like, what? What does that have? I mean, to, I mean, what is it? What is what is that a response to? I mean, it's just, I don't know. It, it just seems like you, you, uh, like you, you're you're a fan of seed oils and everything, and 
and you, you, you can, you, you don't, you can talk about it like in a fancy way with, with nice big words, but in the end, it just seems like to be completely illogical. What's the, so I take illogical to mean like there's some kind of contradiction. Is there any contradiction in what I said? It just doesn't seem to, to, to make sense to me. Oh, well, and that just means that. And just, and, 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 and just from, from what I've seen and observed. Um... Right. So that, that doesn't mean that what I'm saying is illogical. It means like from your perspective, what I'm saying is unintelligible. Mm. Right. So if what I'm saying is unintelligible to you, I mean, from my perspective, I would just take that as evidence that you need to get more familiar with these terms. Like, if you go into Google right now and type in uh, multicollinearity or variance inflation factor, it will verify exactly what I've told you, right? Like, what I've told you about nutritional epidemiology and including variables in the adjustment model and what would happen if those variables behaved the way you're saying they behave, what we would see in the outcome data, what we would see in the effect measure afterward, all of that is verified by just typing multicollinearity variance inflation factor adjustment into Google and just watching a couple videos on the subject. Easily verifiable. Mm. And you can reproduce it mathematically. I mean, I could open up R right now and grab a data set and literally demonstrate this to you on like like right now. I mean, like I'm, I'm not going to because I don't think that makes for very good content. But what I'm saying is not hocus pocus. This is just mathematics. OK, how about this? I mean, we we've eaten significantly less meat and less animal products in the past hundred years and our rates of heart disease, cancer, all chronic diseases have gone up. So th that seems I mean, to be okay. In the, yeah. In the, so like yeah. this, this just, I mean, like, is this, is this evidence that you, are you submitting this as evidence for the hypothesis? Yeah. I mean, it would be, it would be basically a, a, a cohort of people <laughs> like a, a population that has deviated from eating lots of meat and has paid a price uh you know in terms of well, how, do you know, disease, how do you know they paid, conscious diseases? I, I don't mean to cut you off but how, how do you know that they've paid a price in virtue of like eating less meat maybe they paid a price in terms of affluence maybe they paid a price in the fact that they can afford to eat whatever the hell they want or they um they paid a price in terms of um having access to labor saving devices maybe there's less physical activity like there's all sorts of alternative hypotheses about what produces more disease personally i think it's like an intersection of a, of a number of different factors that produces like the types of disease that we see um in the mo in modern time and i think survivorship bias also is something that you can't disambiguate here because in the early 1900s is where we really saw the stepwise reductions in infant and child mortality so prior to those times yeah, sure. It's natural that everybody would look like super robust and fit, right? Because like the weaker half of the population was dying every generation. But now in the modern area, in the modern era, we rescue all those people. And maybe those are just the sickly people that would have otherwise died. And now we've rescued them. They're allowed to survive through childhood. And maybe they just produce sickly adults. And then you see a rise in chronic disease. That's an alternative hypothesis, right? So it's not—it's still not clear to me how that evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than even the negation of your hypothesis or some alternative hypothesis. No, no, it just—it just seems to me like you really pick and choose what epidemiology you like. And even, no, even I explained it. I expl i explained why. Like, <laughs> I mean, okay, I explained why. Um, I have more credence in certain epidemiology as opposed to other epidemiology. I have more credence in prospective cohort studies than I do for cross-sectional studies because they have the necessary components to inform a causal inference, whereas a cross-sectional study doesn't, right? A cross-sectional study but, has no te has no temporal component. You can't it actually can't disambiguate cause and effect. Or, or um, antecedent events versus consequent events, you can't disambiguate those things with cross-sectional studies. You can with cohort studies, which is why I give them more credence. I don't cite cross-sectional studies. So when you tell me that I'm being inconsistent with regards to epidemiology, you're either just confused or making some kind of category mistake because I'm literally not talking about that type of epidemiology when I make claims about epidemiology uh, or when I use epidemiology to support a claim, I'm just literally not talking about that type of epidemiology. Mm -hmm. How about um? I mean, how about the, the the blue zones where they're eating lots and lots of meat, and even like the Hunza eat like fifty percent of their food from dairy, and uh, like just just it seems like the, the the blue zones do eat a lot of meat. 
and they live obviously a very long time. Are, are, are there more confounders in, in, that, in those groups as well? Well, it just it, it also just seems like a cross-sectional thing. Like it, it's not clear how that ev is actually evidence for the hypothesis because there's a number of other factors that could explain that. I mean, the blue zones also tend to be more um, of a religious orientation and maybe religious orientations have, you know, some longevity benefit. Maybe, um, I mean, they may eat a lot of meat, but they also eat a lot of plants. So maybe it's the plants that are conferring the longevity benefit. It's not clear that the evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than than the alternative hypothesis that I'm putting on the table, right? Like, your, your burden is to provide some evidence that is actually more expected on your hypothesis than some other alternative hypothesis or even just straight up the negation of your hypothesis, right? So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the problem with this is that we're going piece by piece and it's much, and to me, the, the, the claim is, is much more logical when you look at it like holistically, like, okay, in the world, eating more meat is associated with longevity. Okay, blue zones, they, they eat meat, they live longer. Meat is the most nutrient dense thing, right? People do better in keto and ketosis on low carb diets relative to high carbs. Like you put these pieces together and in themselves, they might not work to substantiate the claim, but when you put them all together, that, that, that seems to make more sense, which is why I don't feel like this is going to get anywhere um right but, but with, what, with what, the way it's going what you're what you're okay so a, a hypothesis can you can make predictions but a hypothesis can also make retrodictions right so a hypothesis can make a prediction about what you uh, what you're likely to see in the future what you're going to see in the future if you perform some test or or in you know make some observation or do some investigation but you can also make retro retrodictions right so those are just things that are um, subsumed by the theory itself right so what you're what you're telling me is all retrodictive right they're they're all just like look and look we have all of these phenomena and we could just package them up into this idea that all else equal any diet consisting of less than 20 percent meat will not be likely to yield maximum longevity to a greater degree than a diet of greater than 80 percent meat and the thing is that just seems like a just so story right it just seems like a fairy tale it seems like a, it's it, it just seems like your storytelling because i don't know i don't know exactly why I should think that this hypothesis is even theoretically virtuous, right? So, like when I'm talking about predictions, I'm talking about the 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 scope and fruitfulness of the hypothesis, right? So, this the you certainly have some degree of scope because you're trying to pull together a bunch of phenomena, but like what novel predictions does this hypothesis make? Right? Well, well, Hi hypotheses generate predictions. That like that that's one of their fundamental goals is to generate predictions. So like what novel predictions has this hypothesis made that you can point to and be like, listen, given this hypothesis, we 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 performed an investigation and saw that. Right? Well, I'll give you an example. Um like a long time ago, we we saw that I think it was Saturn's orbit was kind of perturbed by something. Like we would we would run some calculations, we'd look in the sky and uh Saturn was not behaving right, right? And we got went back to the drawing board and was like Oh, actually, our math makes sense if we presuppose that there's another body out there with roughly this mass occupying this space. And then we point the telescope where it would have to be in order for the math to make sense, and boom, there's Neptune. Right? That's a novel prediction that's made by hypothesis. I'm asking you, like, what novel predictions this hypothesis has made? Okay, well, how about this? So, I... Briefly going back to what I was saying about nature and embracing a more natural um, way of eating. So nature would be it, humans in, in a natural context, right? Would be getting lots of sunlight, which has been shown to be beneficial, right? For longevity, there would be uh, grounding, which is shown to be beneficial as well. They would be engaging in lifestyle factors that seem to extrapolate positive outcomes. Um, with as measured by longevity so why would it be that when all these things are producing more longevity meat or like the diet is one thing that would get in the way of that but like when all these factors are, are supporting it i'm not necessarily claiming that that's the case i don't i don't know what you're talking about right now i mean like it, it's your it's your proposition on the table i'm open to persuasion right it's your job to persuade me of the proposition right 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 so so all these other things that humans do in a natural context like getting tons of sunlight mm -hmm. all these things that all these all these things have been shown 
to be beneficial for longevity typically and 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 our the the diet is one is something that you're um arguing will not actually no. be good for longevity well no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing that it isn't I'm con- I'm con- I'm content I'm I I could be completely agnostic about it what I'm doing is challenging your proposition right I I'm, I'm, well, just because I'm challenging the proposition does not mean that I'm affirming that it's negation that's certainly not what I'm doing right so I'm open to persuasion maybe it is the case that though that those diets do offer like mac are like offer maximum longevity or whatever the, the thing is that we're still stuck on this one question what the hell's the evidence for that um uh, what, what what I'm trying to say is that humans engage in naturally in lifestyle factors that yield longevity, right? All these things that have been shown, like sunlight, which I don't think you, even you would dispute. So why would it be like, uh, I'm not even gonna ask the question. It would make sense that the diet is one other thing that doing naturally would allow us to live long. Um. Yeah, maybe. Like that just seems like, re- like, like it looks like you're providing like an argument for the proposition right but the thing is that you granted to me earlier that it's a it's it's a scientific hypothesis it's an empirically testable proposition that is used to unify and systematize um knowledge and knowledge about phenomena and whatnot so it's not particularly interesting to me like the the argument for it necessarily because i could always just ask for the next premise i don't I'm not really particularly interested in doing that because it's a scientific hypothesis i just need to ask like what the hell's the evidence for it yeah, i mean um, the, ev- the evidence could be like an inference but then like it, it, it's almost like making the admission that you don't have any empirical evidence for it like your evidence is some kind of inference structure and you know that would be somewhere that i would be i might be willing to go but i mean you'd ha- i think you'd also have to at the same time grant me that this this is not an empirical uh like you don't have any empirical evidence to support the proposition because i mean you, you've stated like i think like five pieces of evidence and none of them have panned out right i could i could just dream up alternative hypotheses on the spot and ask you why the, why the evidence is more expected on yours rather than mine and like it, it's just it's a brick wall and a dead end every single time so i mean like are you willing to sign off that you don't have any empirical evidence for this proposition if you want to go into like exploring some kind of inference structure well i mean i can put a few studies together that seem to corroborate the point that eating meat is good for longevity for example um low, like like if you put the pieces together from a more broad point of view like i've i could give you randomized control trials showing people in ketosis get better biomarkers or people removing fiber from their diet get uh better constipation or like constipation relief or people stopping oxalates or lectins get better results as well or like people eating um more meat uh improves anemia or like like yeah, the, the, there's a bunch of things that one put together. Yeah, it, it would, sounds would, like. Would leave, but wait, wait, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude and cut you off, but it sounds like you're making a category mistake because a lot of the endpoints and a lot of those studies don't even interact with the proposition. The proposition. No, the proposition is about maximum longevity. Yeah. It's not about. Well, bio, so, it's not about biomarkers moving in one way or the other because maybe biomarkers move in the opposite direction. You get a longevity benefit. That's possible. Okay. It, is is it possible for for a biomarker to worsen yet that might that may yield more longevity? Sure, of course it's possible. What's the what's the contradiction? Yeah. Well, well, I, I, well, like when when has that been seen before? A when has it been worse, seen before? It, well, like when like how 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 would that come into fruition? Like what's what's a biomarker that that could get worse? And yet longevity gets better. We see this tons of tons of time. Like we see this all over the place where biomarkers get better and then you have shortened longevity and biomarkers get worse and you have and you have longer longevity. Like people's biomarkers are going up and down all the time. Right. Like we, people are people are dying with perfectly good biomarkers. Right. People are people are living like weirdly long times with enormously wacky biomarkers. So, I mean, it, it's again, like I'm just saying that it's possible because I don't I don't, can't think of a contradiction entailed from an instantiation of a biomarker going up and or a biomarker going out of whack and um, having some longevity benefit. Um, I mean, like I could give you I, I could give you an example, actually. Um, so, exa- for example, uh, in populations that have the um, 
C677, C677 T mutation for MTHFR, they have all sorts of biomarkers that are going out of whack, right? Particularly homocysteine, yet they live longer. Don't know why. People with increased bilirubin live longer. That's a biomarker that's out of whack. Happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Right, it just like it happens all the time. Pit markers go out of range, and for whatever reason, you get a longevity benefit. Um, but that's a th but this is tangential to the, my point, which was, listen, like those studies aren't even things that are interacting with uh, with the proposition because the proposition is about maximum longevity. It's not about biomarkers. It's not about oxalates, you know, causing kidney stones or anything like that. It, it, it's literally about longevity, right? So I, I would just yep. dismiss those studies as some kind of category mistake. Well, well, part of what I said is that other foods besides meat seem to be conferring a detriment, and those and these studies would give credence to that because if people are literally just doing this, if everything is controlled besides the removal of you know a certain type of food or a certain um, toxin, then it would then you know you would reach the conclusion that that toxin is problematic, and, and there's all these studies across the board showing that plants uh, are causing problems for people well what do you mean i mean like again like if if this is i mean like i'm going to treat this like a new claim uh because even that wouldn't interact with the proposition so just, even just treating this like a new claim like the highest internal validity evidence that we have on the subject wouldn't be expected on that hypothesis right like like fruit and vegetables like pretty much universally correlate with uh, positive health outcomes the more of them you eat that's even tr true of whole grains that's even true of legumes it's true of pretty much any whole plant food that you that is like widely disseminated into any population from which we have data like this we find the opposite of that like the results that we find are not expected on your hypothesis they're they're expected on the negation of the hypothesis right Well, like, I mean, I, like I said, I just don't think that um, it, it doesn't seem like it still doesn't seem like you're being very consistent. Um, Why? OK, wait, wait, wait. We need to resolve this. We need to resolve this, because if you're going to accuse me of like some kind of contradiction or inconsistency, we really need to dissolve. We, we really need to resolve this. So you are claiming that I'm inconsistent with my use of epidemiology, correct? Yeah. Render that argument for me, please. Well, I mean, you've, you're, you're continuously picking and choosing what epidemiology is valid based on how, whether, what, based on whether or not it supports, um, no. the, the, the negate, the, 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 whether based on whether or not it supports the negation of my hypothesis. No, no, I'm not. Have I, I, I haven't referred to any cross sectional data, right? I've only ever referred to prospective cohort studies, which I already told you I give higher credence to because they have higher internal validity than, um, cross-sectional studies. Cross-sectional studies don't even have a temporal component. You can't even ascertain antecedent consequent events. You can't ascertain those relationships in cross-sectional studies. Mm. So it's like, I okay. Well, 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 how about this? I mean, th there are. Well, wait, there... wait, 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 wait. We haven't resolved this. Before, yeah, I know. I know. Before, I know. before we right, move right. on, can I get a concession that I'm not being inconsistent to my application reference to epidemiology? Well, well, if if you um okay, well, let me just say one more thing, but uh, before we um before we finalize this, so there, how about the prospective co cohort study showing no um showing no relationship between increased saturated fat consumption and risk of heart disease? Like you, I, I don't imagine you would give credence to a study like that, despite it being a prospective cohort. Well. This is completely tangential to what we're talking about, but I will. Well, it's, it's not. It's uh, not though, because it's not though, because if you wouldn't give credence to a prospective cohort study that's finding the results alternative to the ones that you want to see, or or or, or the re results um, alternative to the negation of my hypothesis, then you don't seem. Then you wouldn't be consistent. But if you do give credence to it, then you are consistent. Listen, there's tons of prospective cohort studies that don't find an association between saturated fat and cardiovascular disease. That's not revelatory to me. I accept that. The thing is that when the data is aggregated, they do. There's what do you mean the data is aggregated? Yeah, when you when you pool all of the cohort studies together and actually like and actually subgroup analyze them or perform a meta regression or something like that, when you subgroup analyze them, you always you pretty much always see the increase in risk precisely where 
we would presuppose it being, which is around 10% of calories. You almost always see that. Um, so the problem with the co this is a complete tangent, but I will entertain it. Um, just, just so that this point doesn't escape because like, this is like a really egregious claim that you're making. Okay. So the pro the prospective cohorts raise many of them don't see an association. That's fine. That's because the association is nonlinear. If, if you're, if you're looking at, um, if you're, if your investigation of low to high intake is happening on the floor of the curve, you're not going to see a statistically significant difference. They're both approximately going to be equal with regards to risk. So you're not going to see a statistically significant difference between them. Likewise, if you're comparing low to high on the top of the risk curve, you're also not going to see a statistically significant difference between them, or at least you're less likely to, right? Because they're not going to be that different from one another with regards to the risk conferred. Now, because it's a nonlinear association, if you investigate cohorts on the uptick of that risk, where the lower intake is down here and the upper intake is up here, you almost invariably see the increase in risk. And that's precisely where the increase in risk is said to be, around 10% of calories. That's what the randomized controlled trials show. That's what the epidemiology shows, if you actually care to look, which most researchers don't. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's enormously consistent. I, I don't think we have a research question in nutrition that's as consistent as that one, right? And that's not me rejecting prospective cohort studies. That's me having respect for the evidence hierarchy. Because what I'm doing right there is I'm looking at a meta-analysis, right? I, all of these cohort studies together, how, do, how can we perform some kind, of, some kind of sensitivity analysis such that we can actually um, ascertain sources of heterogeneity? Like, I mean, like the heterogeneity is through the roof, but like I'm going off on a bit of a ramble. But basically, when the data is aggregated, you do see the effect. And having individual cohort studies that don't see the effect is actually expected. Okay. Well, yeah. So, I, so, so that was a tangent that I that that is now resolved because, <laughs> like, we can move on from this. So now I'm going to go back to what I was actually saying with regards to the claim that you made about my reference to epidemiology. So when I'm referring to epidemiology, I'm referring to prospective cohort studies in particular. I'm not referring to cross-sectional studies. So when you are saying that my rejection of cross-sectional study is inconsistent when I'm citing uh, prospective cohort studies just in virtue of the fact that they are both epidemiology, I would just say that's, that that's a misrepresentation of my view and what I'm actually doing. What I'm actually doing is respecting the evidence hierarchy and actually respecting internal validity and the constituents required to have a sound causal inference, right? Like we can go into causal inference if you want. Well, what would that, what would that entail going into causal inference? I would just explain a few things. I mean, like, <laughs> um, so like, yeah, like, like, let's just, uh, we can, we can start off by, by doing this. Like, how would you define the word cause? Um, one thing, one thing in itself leads to something else happening independent right. of, of other factors. Right. So what does leads to mean? Yeah, like, that's actually, yeah. Um, how to define, uh, when it's like, One's like giving rise to something else. Like it's it's yeah. What does giving rise to mean? Like so, you're 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 plugging in synonyms here, right? You yeah, see, you I, see yeah, the issue. I, mean, I I feel like cause cause is kind of the word where you like cause is not a word that typically is people ask you to define. Yeah, but it's not a conceptual primitive. You know what a conceptual primitive is, right? Uh, no. A conceptual primitive is basically like a concept that can't be reduced any further. It's it, it's primitive. You try to reduce it, all you, oh, get okay. is, all you get is circularity, like it, like A equals A equals A. Like, but cause is not actually a conceptual primitive, but it is very difficult to define. Um, the definition of causality that's typically used in like the statistics literature is an antecedent state of affairs preceding a consequent state of affairs reliably. Um, or something like that, right? So the three, the three core criteria that you need for a causal inference is um, an association. So the two variables need to associate with one another. You need a time precedence, meaning the one variable needs to precede the other, and you need replicability or non-spuriousness, which means you need to be able to observe this reliably over and over and over and over again. Now, prospective cohort studies have temporality you can see the consistency of the association, and you can see that there is an association. It has all of the components necessary for a sound causal inference. 
Cross-sectional study doesn't. It doesn't have a temporal component. You literally can't disambiguate antecedent state of affairs from consequent state of affairs with a cross-sectional study. That's why I don't reference them. Right? So when you're saying I'm being inconsistent, it's not clear to me at all that I'm being inconsistent. Right? Yeah, no, it actually, it actually sounds like you're being consistent. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay, I can take cool. that back. So, yeah. Okay, you can take that back. Great. Great. Yeah. So now we can get back to the actual discussion, which is what the hell is the evidence for the proposition? Yeah, I mean, I like to be honest with you, I was looking more towards a conference, like not not. Yeah, I, I, well, exactly. I, I know that you had like an idea of where this conversation was going to go. I don't care yeah. about that. I don't care about that. This is where the conversation is, because I think your error in reasoning is on a deeper level. Right. So like this is it's it's levels. Right. So we have the level of philosophy. And then we have the level of epistemology, and then we have the level of scientific epistemology, and then we have the level of science, and then we have the level of information, which is like this study versus that study. You want to fuck around on this level, talking about this study versus that study. I'm dragging your ass down to the level of epistemology, where I know that you're going to be uncomfortable, because if you were comfortable there, you wouldn't believe the stuff that you believe. Right. So this is a perfect place to drag you <laughs> because you're not going to have any answers to these questions as you, you've demonstrated. Right. So. Are you willing to concede the proposition at this point? No, because I, I, I believe it's true. No. OK, so what's the evidence for it? I, I think my piece of evidence work together, right? Like, I don't know I, what that I, means. I, what does that mean? I, I think you, you, you pull them together and it seems to and it. And, it, and, you, and, you, and it makes sense like you. Yeah, no, because in like if you look at them individually, it's not clear that the actual evidence is more expected on your hypothesis than the negation of your hypothesis. And then when you aggregate them together, it's not going to be clear whether or not the aggregate is more expected on your hypothesis as opposed to the, the negation of the hypothesis. It's not doing any work for you by just saying, consider it together. You're like, you're, you wound up in the exact same scenario, just saying, Oh, let's consider them together. That doesn't do any work for you, right? You need to actually yeah. provide some evidence that shows that, like it's more expected on your hypothesis rather than the negation of your hypothesis so like what is that evidence yeah i mean yeah honestly i, I like there's not really much more i, I could i could say i'm not, I'm not going to concede my point because I, I do i then i, I think I really you're just do. being dishonest i honestly just think you're just being dishonest if that's the point like like if you're if you are not willing to concede the proposition for which you have no evidence and it's a scientific it's scientific hypothesis you signed off on that but it but it has no evidence and you're not willing to concede it that just sounds like dishonesty to me how's, how's, how's that dishonesty because you don't have any evidence for your scientific hypothesis so, so how so, is it a scientific hypothesis rather than just being a just so story it's just a fairy tale so, so yeah but i'm kind of i'm kind of um confused by by your usage of the word dishonest as in um like well i'm not saying i'm not that... saying that you are dishonest i'm saying it seems like you're dishonest because if i were in your shoes i would just concede the proposition say i'm not going to believe that anymore i don't know what the basis for belief is if you have no evidence so either you're like dishonest like you like it just seems like you're either dishonest or delusional or motivated or or a, like a zealot or some kind of ideologue like because if, if I was in your shoes, I would just concede the prop and I wouldn't I would not believe it anymore because I don't have any evidence for it. I can't render an argument for it. I can't render the evidence for it. So it's like, what is it other than well, just like an assertion? It's just a fairy tale. I mean, the, I mean, I could say the reason why I believe it is because of the results that I see, like, and it's not something that I can quantify. So the, which is why it's kind of difficult. Like, I, I know what I see. And um, what do you see? I, I know. What does that mean? What do you like? What do you like? What do you mean? Like, what are like, you referring like, to? Like how I see people's health improve when they do at least eighty percent meat, which is you know working within the confines of the claim. Right. So like, you're not worried about selection bias there. That's probably the one scenario where selection bias would be most prevalent, right? Because the people that you're seeing do this, like it's it's very clear that they're self-selecting to do it. And you're not going to see, you're not necessarily going to be more likely to see or equally as likely to see people who attempted to do it and then didn't get those results and then did something else, right? So the, mm. the, the selection bias and survivorship bias effects are probably going to be most like present with anecdotal evidence, like the evidence that you're giving. So that's certainly not clear why that would be more expected on your hypothesis, because I could have an alternative hypothesis. Maybe 
Those people are benefiting because it's the first time in their life that they became truly cognizant of what they were eating. And that, that's where the benefit came from. Because maybe, how, they, how, maybe they lost weight. Maybe they were eating something that was bad for them. And removing it um, improved, their, improved their health to some degree. I like that. But that doesn't, that doesn't offer support for the proposition. Yeah, I mean, which is why I'm saying something I can't quantify. I just, I mean, you, you, I mean, you, you, you could easily say, well, yeah, it's a survivorship bias um, and, and things like that. Uh, and it's selection bias. That's fine. But and, and, and also seen, like those, yeah. the, just just to be clear, like those anecdotes actually don't really interact with uh, the proposition because the pro the outcome, the independent var or the dependent variable in the proposition is maximum longevity. The independent variable is this type of diet compared to that type of diet. Um, the dependent variable here, which is maximum longevity, is not seen in these anecdotes. Like, you're not measuring longevity with the people that you're, like, talking to in Facebook groups and on Twitter. And, like, you're, you're, not, yeah. doing, you're not doing that. So, like, how, how does that even qualify as evidence for the proposition? I mean, I, I would, I mean, like, it, it would seem to me that feeling better, being healthier, is a good marker for better longevity relative to feeling bad. Yeah, people feel people feel good all the time doing things that are bad for them. That's that's not revelatory to me. People do people do drugs and oh, feel just... good, and like people feel people feel great when they do drugs and they get longevity detriments. People feel great when they drink alcohol and they get longevity de detriments. They feel great when they smoke and they get longevity detriments. Why should I accept that this is an instance where people are doing something feeling great and getting a longevity benefit? Even you're not measuring longevity. I have no I have no reason to accept this. Yeah, I mean, you you don't need to accept it. Um, well, I'm open to being convinced, right? That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I don't know, Nick. I mean, you're you're a very very you're a much better debater than I am. I I just think I'm um like I I think when I when I look at the bigger picture, when I consider everything, it, this this is what seems to make sense for me. Um, when when trying to measure longevity and also i mean there's people who live a very very long time eating meat it would it seems like from my understanding um they're like greek philosophers who lived well into their hundreds eating mostly meat i, I don't think humans died at age 30 or 25 i think we died much older than that um and, and there's i've seen some people talk about that like i, I just and, and none of this stuff you would you would um give credence to it's just well they just seem like assertions like i i have no idea but like the, th the thing is like again we're kind of back in this in this era in this uh it, we're back dealing with something that i feel like i've already addressed which is like you're trying to aggregate all of these things together but the thing is that e each one of each piece of evidence that you're putting on the table it's not clear why they're more expected on your hypothesis so in aggregate you're just going to have the same problem Right. So like Greek philosophers living into their hundreds and eating meat. Well, maybe they were living into their hundreds due to some other variable. Like maybe maybe religiosity has something to do with it. Like maybe a survivorship bias effect has something to do with it because they also encountered the infant and child mortality problems. Right. So it's not clear that the diet It's not clear exactly what effect, if any, the diet is having on their longevity. Necessarily. Well, mm, mm, yeah, I, I just 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 from what I've seen in people who eat less than 20 percent meat or just even much less than 20 percent meat very little meat seem to be very very unhealthy and not do very well this is just from what i've observed and you know are you collecting data about like death records or something no it's just right I've, so so that what doesn't seen in the past yeah so like if you're not collecting that sort of data then it doesn't interact with the proposition yeah i you know uh yeah i don't really have much more i feel like we need to talk about i mean the, but you're not willing to concede the proposition though right no because i i believe it's true i mean i believe what, you know, what's the, you know, just try really hard man like bear with me what is the source of the belief i think um i think if you make a nutritional change and you feel better from it and the only thing that you changed was the food you eat you consistently feel better then i think that that is a good uh marker for having better longevity i don't think feeling bad like with a certain diet and then i think feeling bad is going to produce more longevity than feeling good all all, all other factors aside 
Well, I mean, you're certainly not in a position to say that that you're observing all other factors aside. I mean, just it, it initially, like what you said, like if all you did was change your diet, that entails like probably like it's somewhere around a hundred different changes if you're going to something that approximates a carnivore diet, because you're you, people people typically eat varied diets of like tens of hundreds of different things, and if all of a sudden you replace all of those things with meat. You're making hundreds, uh, tens of tens or hundreds of substitutions, right? So it's not clear to me, like, if it was just the substitution of one of those things that had the effect and the meat is kind of here, here nor there. And if you would have gone on a similar diet without that meat and just replaced that one thing anyway, you would have seen the exact same result. It's not clear to me that that's what's going on. And additionally, because you're not collecting, like, death record data, it's not clear that it interacts with the proposition. So when you say, like... I'm making these observations about the way people live or like what people are doing and it seems to like work for them or whatever. Um, it's not clear to me that that is actually evidence for the proposition because the proposition, the dependent variable of interest in the proposition is maximum longevity. I don't think these are measurements of longevity, like feeling great. We go back to drugs. Drugs are not a measure. Feeling great from drugs is not a me measurement of longevity. Feeling great from smoking, feeling great from shooting opium. Th those are not measurements of longevity, right? So I don't know why it would be a, longe a measurement of longevity in this case. You need to provide an argument for that. Well, it would be having I mean, consistent energy levels, better sleep. Like all these things would be good mark. Like if a diet... In itself, only changing the diet, and I, I, I hear you, like you're making a ton of substitutions, so on and so forth. But if you're just changing your diet, like you're making substitutions, but all that you're changing is within the diet, and you feel significantly better, better sleep, everything that I mentioned, then, I mean, I, I would think, I would think any reasonable person would agree that this is uh, a recipe for longevity. Well, not necessarily. I mean. Because, I mean, we have we have tons of drugs that interact with sleep. We have tons of drugs that interact with, like, your stamina and your alertness and your, like, wakefulness throughout the day. We have tons of drugs that interact with those that probably interact with longevity in a negative way, too. I mean, if I scour the literature hard enough, I'm pretty sure I could find something. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of drugs that, <laughs> that we have at our disposal. I mean, I could find instantiations of where these things haven't held true and just ask you to provide an argument for why they hold true in this case. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like there isn't much. I just, like, I, just, I just feel like there isn't much common sense in in your arguments. I mean, the, the, like I said, the, you say them really nicely, but I, I don't think they actually make any sense. Um, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean like, by not make any sense? Just to be clear, what do you mean by that? Not make any sense. Does that mean that like they just don't jive with your intuitions, or do you think I've I'm lit I've literally asserted a contradiction? No, I, I I don't think you've asserted a contradiction. I think they don't they don't make sense instinctually at all oh so like they, they they they're just like not in accord with your intuitions um that that's part of the problem right that yeah. just sounds like another appeal from incredulity that's a fallacy i'm not going to find that particularly persuasive unless you can find yeah, a, I'm, actu I'm, an I'm, actual I'm, error with my arguments I'm, I'm i'm not trying to persuade you I, yeah well i'm open to persuasion i mean like you came here to debate why did you come here to debate if you're not like here to try to persuade me <laughs> I mean, honestly, I was like more just trying to, I wasn't really trying to do a whole debate, like, like a thing exactly like this. Um, I mean, it's kind of what it, be I didn't anticipate it becoming like this. Like I probably no. should have because a lot, because like, last time we talked, it was more like this. I was more just trying to yeah. talk, but you know, but it's, I mean, that's fine. This is my arena and this is how we play in my arena. Yeah, yeah So like, if, if you're, I, if you're not, if you're not prepared to get on my level, then I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can happily take the l and, and and leave that's fine um i would prefer though that you concede the proposition because i think that would be the honest thing to do I, i'm not going to concede the proposition because i believe it to be true and it's not just in like like i'm, I'm doing it myself like i'm i'm i'm, I'm doing this because i'm eating at least 80 percent me because because i want to live a long time because yeah. that's what i've so but, like but, i'm but, not going to concede but, but, it because but, i still believe it but wait, 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 wait. But none of the reasons that you've given me for forming the belief are actually things that are clear to me should increase the credence in the belief. Like you're talking about people getting benefits. What does that have to do with maximum longevity? Like you're talking about people feeling good. What does that have to do with maximum longevity? The, the, like those, those things are decoupled, right? If you're, if, you're, if you're saying that like they're coupled somehow, you have to provide an argument for that. Mm. 
yeah like i i think i'm just i think let's, let's just call it because i you know like yeah I, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not no I'm, no i mean like you, you you're gonna have to leave right like you're gonna have to leave the call because i'm not letting you off the hook i want a concession on the proposition because you couldn't defend it i'm not i'm not gonna concede the proposition like well then you're gonna I'm, have I'm, to I'm leave not. the call i'm not leaving i want a pro i want oh. a concession on the proposition because you couldn't defend it yeah well uh, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll just leave them that's fine okay i mean all right all right see you. recording stopped